Hello. Hi there, is that Steve? That's right. Hello, Steve, it's Jason Kirk. How's it, Jason? How's it going? Good. Cool, man. Um, this is a belated interview because I was hoping that I would have spoken to you last year when the, when your best of was released. Okay. But that's cool. It's good, it's good to actually get to speak to you. I've, uh, uh, I'm actually uh, complete now because I've, I've spoken to Tony Cox on a couple of occasions and now I get to speak to you. And, and as far as I'm concerned, you two are sort of, you know, as far as uh, guitar goes, you sort of the, the icons, you see. <laughs> you know, for, for lack of a better word, of course. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, congratulations on on all of it, you know, especially as I say the, the election as well, you know. But um, yeah, um, getting to that, uh, say to the to the compilation or the collection rather. Yeah. Um, how much actually, how much input did you have on that? Was it? Uh, we all, we, uh, each of us, Ian and, and Gita and I, um, we just made a list and okay. to, and gave them to Kerry and you know the. They probably picked all the co the ones common to all of us. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So does do you think it sort of represents, you know, what you've done over the years quite well? Yes, except we couldn't uh, have any of the of the first album on there because of the licensing thing, you know, because the first album's now with BMG. Oh, okay. To be shifty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, what we did. Um, instead was take uh, the tracks we would have chosen off the first album and took one off Orchestra Mundo which then included uh, violin and flute mm -hmm. and then I had a jive off uh, Una Monacqua which, which is mm -hmm. a lot more musicians. Yeah, yeah, because I mean that that's always seems, seems to have been the, the mainstay of the band is that you've always had a very lively um, you know, group of people. I mean, and being, you know, having, uh, obviously, you know, Ian being being sort of a stable like yourself, but yeah. you've always involved a lot of people. Yeah. Um, which, do, do you think that sort of lent, you know, was a good thing and sort of lent to to what Tananas became known for? No, I think uh, in the beginning it was just the three of us anyway. You yeah. Know, and then we, yeah. we we expanded a bit, and we'll probably do some more of that. But mm -hmm. you know, the trio still exists. Um, Orchestra Mundo was uh, was one project there with with the flute and the violin, and then the white ensemble thing was another project, but that wasn't Tananas, the original Tananas trio, really. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, at one point the whole Tananas thing looked looked to sort of die when Gita left, wasn't it? No, well, the thing is that you see, people people maybe see us as a regular band when we're not really a regular no. band, and we never actually set out to be one. We, each person is, is involved in three or four other projects at the same time. You yeah, know? yeah. So that way we can survive. If we just sure. stayed as Tananas, we wouldn't make a living in this country for sure, you know? Yeah, yeah. We'd yeah. have to be touring the world non-stop. <laughs> so each each member has their own, he, his own thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's what actually kept us surviving. Now, um, a lot of people don't understand that Tananas is, is, is not really like a band, it's more a project. You see? Yeah. We've done lots of projects, yes. to the point that people actually believe we're, yeah, we're a straight band. band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, uh, you know, no one can leave and we mustn't get other members and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, basically we can do whatever we want, but... No. Whose idea was it, actually? What? To start Tananas. Yeah. Well, it's just the way it happened, you know. Yeah. It's, a lot of these things one can um, rationalize or justify or whatever in retrospect, but at the time you have no idea what's, what's happening, you know what I mean? And we're yeah. basically making it up as we go along. So yeah. uh, I'd met with Ian, well, it must have been in the early 80s, yeah. and we kind of, we seemed to click personally, you know, and yeah. uh, we kind of threatened to get together and jam, and yeah, it happened. Mm. Eventually, in '86, mm. I was actually living in London at that time, mm. and I came back here. I just had to come back every year for a for a few weeks. You yeah, know? For a fix. <laughs> so when I was back in '86, uh, the first, I think, I arrived on a Friday morning. Yeah. And I went to Jamison's that evening, and I saw Simba Murray with with Sheet on bass. Right. And uh, it's not something I usually do: is walk up to a musician and say, uh, "Can we jam some?" Times. Yeah. I don't usually do that, yeah. but I did, and uh, as it happened, he was anyway working with Ian on a lot of the shifty stuff. Yeah. So we got together, and uh, suddenly we had a gig at Jamison's on the Thursday night, and uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Durban at the Blue Note. So we were mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. commuting. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And 
in that period of six to eight weeks that I was here, that's what we did. We played Jamisons and Durban and we did one market theatre music platform on a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. and then I was gone mm -hmm. again and when I got back end of 87 we actually got together again and then it all started beginning of 88 we started playing again and then you know the, the first album and then kind of every two years we've put out a, an album so far yeah yeah I mean when you actually look back on it I mean like you say you have to have the various projects to keep yourselves going yeah um, but when you actually look back on it you know was the industry good to to Tinnitus as a whole I mean was it a you know was it a a viable thing or well it's, it's not viable in the in the normal sense of the world word but uh, I was very surprised and thrilled at the way uh, people responded to the music the DJs on the radio the mm. TV people mm. the record company also although obviously we, we more more like a pet act I think yeah you know, we're not big sellers or anything like that but that's exactly where I want to be so yeah. it's not a, a matter of viable for me it's a, a matter of somewhere in the middle where you're earning a decent living and you don't have to walk around with guilt that you're just churning out bullshit and yeah. selling it to people that's nice. and that is where I want to be and that yeah. is where I am you know? yeah I'm not if I wanted to earn lots of money out of music, I would play commercial music and play six nights a week and yeah, back to the city. You yeah, know. which you could do, but you choose not to. Yeah, yeah and no. it's a good place to be when you actually are able to exercise that. Yes, because I mean there was a time when, you know, especially I think when Tanana started, you you were probably one of the first sort of well, not sort of say acts uh, to take what was happening sort of with, with, with new white music yeah. and take it to Europe, take it to, you know, take it to a different audience, which, yeah. uh, I mean, even after you had done it, um, it's only really recently that, um, you know, that you've had others follow you, but um, yeah. I think you've, you've got a respect within the industry that, that you were the guys to actually help you know, spread spread the word. You know, with with say, I mean, even, probably even before Johnny Clegg did it. To you know, to a certain extent, not on obviously not to the same, uh, yeah, same yeah. scale, but uh, yes. I mean, what's was that a, a sort of an intention? No, no, you know, none of the. I don't really treat um, this thing as a career. It's it's just whatever happens you know no, nothing is really done intentionally probably keeps you sane though. yeah no because uh yeah I, I don't i don't really take my career that seriously you yeah. know i mean i'm at a point now where i've got enough of a network around the country and in namibia zimbabwe mozambique blah blah, blah yeah. to actually carry on playing just in this area quite happily for the next 50 years or whatever but <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh i'm I'm actually not interested in going abroad unless I'm invited there, you know, no, no. and no. I'm not interested in cracking the American market at all. Yeah. I'll go and play in America if I'm invited there, yeah. if I've got a visa and a passport, I mean a work permit yeah. and a ticket, that's fine, but yeah. I'm, I'm not into uh, colonizing <laughs> the world or anything like that. Okay, know? yeah, but all that is to say you were, you know, unintentionally sort of part of that. Yes. Yeah. Which is great, you know. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah. Yeah, one can see these things in ret retrospect, you know, that, that that's the way it happened. But yeah. at the time, as I say, you don't really have a clue. You're just making it up as you go along. Which is probably the best way. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now, I mean, having said that, um, you know, you're up for an award, you know, for at, at the Summer Award, um, you know, for, for your Video 7. Mm. But now, um, is, you know, is it are the accolades important? No, know? not at all, not at all. It's a bit of a joke, actually. <laughs> Okay. Don't quote me on that. No, 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 I mean, no. I appreciate these things, but sure. I, don't, I don't take it seriously at all. I mean, mm. uh, I'll go and collect an award if, uh, if whoever our manager or, you know, usually Ian and Jeet are very, uh, they're very skilled at dodging things like interviews and whatever. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm usually the guy who's got to deal with all this <laughs> stuff, including it's picking up bad, awards. Eh? So it's not so it's bad. Not that bad yeah. But for me, it's, it's not about the award. It's, a, it's about the opportunity of seeing all these musicians you haven't seen for maybe <laughs> six months or a year and yeah. all the, the journalists and the yeah. industry people and chatting you know, yeah the social yeah. thing yeah it's but i mean the recognition factor i mean no nah, that 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 is just somebody else's perception you know yeah it isn't necessarily i mean there's there's loads and loads of people in south africa who don't know who tell us at all you know? yeah 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 but i mean then, then are you are you doing this sort of selfishly like purely for yourself? No, no, no. I'm doing it because it's, that's, well, that's what I'm programmed to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a product. Okay. It's one of the things that I do, and I love it. Yeah. See, and the, the, the main thing for me is not records or recording. It's about performing live. Sure. And that's that's what I like about it. That's what, what's kept me going. Mm. And as I said earlier, that 
what's actually kept me going is the fact that I've got different people that I play with. Yeah. Very, very different from each other. Mm. So that I can go around the country three or four times rather than just once. Mm. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, have you sort of seen, um, you know, I mean, you, you know, you've been through it when there was no sort of, uh, I, I sort of classified as being a, almost like a patriotism to, to sort of South African music. I mean, there were always uh, Tanana's fans, but have, yes. you, have, have you sort of experienced, like in the, in the last like two years, an increase in, in people's interest in, in, in what it is that you actually do? Yes, I have, and, and a lot of people, uh, it's interesting uh, that you brought up the thing about you leaving the band, because I mean, mm. these kind of rumors go around yeah, anyway. They do, yeah. And uh, they kind of spice things up in a way. You see. <laughs> <laughs> That's your favorite. Because now people come and ask you. you see, yeah. They come and talk to you and they say, what's going on with Don and I? Are you doing another album and all that kind of stuff? So there's a mystique thing happening. Here. Yeah. You know, and uh, one one interviewer kind of uh, said to me, it's amazing because every time you think there's nothing happening with Don and Oz, there suddenly there's an album. Which is true. It was the case. So, uh, yeah, you can expect an album from from the original trio this year ah, when excellent. Ian comes back. Okay, cool. Yeah, he but seems to be we, the busiest of all of you. Yeah, well, that's that's Ian, you know. I mean, as a drummer, you have to physically keep it up. You yes. have to keep that thing going otherwise you can lose it you can get a bit unfit and then you're not able to be on top of it so mm. yeah he, he has to not has to but he, he loves to mm. play a lot and work a lot and mm. keep busy you know that's that's just the way he is yeah and i mean then guitarists like are a bit more laid back and lazy <laughs> 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 but i i do work uh, a fair amount even though now that i'm i'm staying on this on this farm in the bavians cliff oh. uh, there's no more rent and bond and things i get oh. to think of yeah i can work less and in fact fact I am but at, at this point I'm actually for a reason I'm not sure of, actually <laughs> doing more in a v- very busy period yeah, now which yeah. is very uh, usually a very quiet period this period yeah yeah it normally works that way yeah you know, we <laughs> need to expect to you land up working yeah well I mean it's not necessarily a bad thing as well no it's great yeah I mean, you know yeah but now um also the the the, the remix yeah uh, I have to ask you about that because I mean how do you feel you know are, are, you, are you happy to have other people reinterpret you know what you've done I don't care I really don't mind no. it's their business no, yeah. no I'm not that precious about the music I don't own the music you know in in terms of I don't think it's my music I don't see the music as my music I see yeah. it as music are you interested at least at, you know, at, at how they interpret it you know, yeah yeah no I've listened to it yeah and uh, I, I listened to it in a in a pretty much neutral state, you know. <laughs> you have to, yeah. I didn't actually uh, yeah. uh, respond mm. almost, you know, mm. but I, I found it quite interesting, you know. Mm. And then, it's, I mean, it's especially as far as the interview. But I thought uh, if, if this is what these guys make of it and this is whatever a genre it is, whether it's techno or whatever the, mm. the hell it is, mm. yeah. I thought personally they could have done a lot better, you know. I yeah. mean, um, personally, I wouldn't have um, put in rhythm boxes and computers. I would have used uh, uh, Ian's drums. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds so much yeah. nicer. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, that's as I say, it's it's, it's just the way they. It, I don't care about it because if those people want to sample the music and use it, it's fine. Mm. It's it's just not an issue at all, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I say, when when you look at the industry now, especially mm. you know with wanting to do a new album. Have you also seen a, a sort of a, a more of a, I don't know, sort of more of a genuine commitment from from the likes, you know, of GMP? Well, GMP I, personally speaking, I mean, when we first joined Gallo, um, I, I think it was almost expected or, 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 or whatever of us to give the record company shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of out of that now, yeah. and I've seen a change. And maybe it was a change in me. Maybe it's not even a change in in the record company. Mm. But I'm quite happy with the record company because I know that uh, it's much of a muchness, whatever record company you go yeah. with. Because I've actually had the experience. Now a lot of business people or journalists or recording industry people see me as a musician but mm. basically my first album I did independently your mother's very worried about you 1979 mm. I paid for that mm. I've had a thousand printed against all advice they mm. said do 250 mm. 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 I flogged that uh, I, that was probably uh, pro writer speaking the best mm. money I made out of a record mm. Mm. the mm. second one I had to do with a small company called Mountain Records in Cape Town yeah. because 
RPM we pressed um, my first album, mm -hmm. moved office and informed me that they lost when I ordered more, that uh. they lost my art artwork and master tape. Uh, sure. I was in a position to, to do anything about it legally at yeah, the time. Yeah. So I went to Mountain Records. Yeah. From Mountain Records, well, I did two, one solo, one with Tony Cox live. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. I went to... Um, well, then after that, it was basically Tananas. Yeah, you know? So yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is I've got an, the experience of yeah, the couple, being yeah. an independent label mm. myself, mm, mm. joining a small record company, joining Shifty, which is an independent mm. label, and Gala. Mm. And believe me, the first one was the most viable. One. Yeah, it normally is. But <laughs> yeah, but well, yeah. the rest is very much of a muchness, you know, mm. it's, it doesn't really matter whether you're with an indie or a big record company, mm. if you've got a good relationship with people and they enjoy your music, mm. that is all, that is the basic thing, the mm. simple thing about it for me, and mm. maybe I've matured, maybe I've changed, maybe I'm less of an angry young man now, and, you know, I mm. just feel more respect, maybe because I respect myself more, I don't know, but mm. I feel more respect coming from the people who work here, mm. And I don't really have a problem with them because I know that there's certain things that happen in this game. Mm. And one of them is the color of your sleeve is never the, the color that mm. you you wanted it mm. in the mm. beginning and mm. that there's always spelling mistakes and mm. shit like that. So it's, it's, there's no point for me to get upset about those things because yeah. that's a normal thing. Yeah, that's just how it goes, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah my, my relationship with Gala at the moment is actually very cool. You know, yeah. I don't have much to do with them, but I, I, mm. I see them as... Well, I mean, well the individuals I deal with anyway, that they, they're helpful people, they're nice people, mm -hmm. and they're doing their best. That's mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the beauty of it, because the thing is that potentially, you know, as much as not not even from a, I mean, all that you want from your label is that, obviously, that the, the, your your music is available. Yeah. But also that, you know, the possibilities of your music being heard to, by a wider audience yeah. now more than say like five or even ten years ago yes. were you know have doubled so you know the potential there is you know for you to to grow is is i mean to say not that that is your you know that that isn't your driving force yes but it i mean i'm sure you would be happy if you know another ten thousand people heard your music absolutely you know, yeah i, I mean, could buy another farm with exactly. that <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't break your heart now <laughs> okay but now you're going to be uh, you say you're putting the, the original the original ensemble together and you're going to be putting another album out yeah well when that's what we usually do because when ian comes over he's here usually here for six to eight weeks yeah so in that period we've got to write new material rehearse yeah perform and record yeah and it's nice <laughs> it's, it's nice it's you know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But we handle it very well, in a, in a, in a very kind of calm and and, uh, and elegant way. Mm. Usually, you know, mm -hmm. we, in a, in a yeah, in a, in, a, in a strange sort of way. <laughs> 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 but I mean, now when you know, if, if you sort of have to sum it up, I mean, to this point, I mean, mm. you, you know, looking at the collection and obviously seeing, obviously seeing how you know how it all sort of grew and came together. Yeah. But but w what do you think it is that sort of you know was your you know what what is the appeal? you know, of Tanana. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Ian is a, is a fantastic musician. Yeah. You know, um, Sheet is, is, is also unique. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. those are the kind of musicians that I like to listen to. Mm. He's not a musician that you can hear his whole pedigree or what mm. guitar school he went to in the States or mm. who his teachers were, but a unique mm. musician. And, mm. and I, I see Ian as, as one of those and I see Sheet as one of those. Mm. I don't necessarily see myself as one of those, but I, I know that um, somehow, for whatever reason, uh, with mainly instrumental acoustic music, I've done pretty well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the appeal is that it's just three guys on the stage and they're getting. I mean, that's what Salif Kata's band mm -hmm. said when they heard us doing a sound check in Japan. They said, "Jesus, you know." Mm -hmm. We're like a 14 piece yeah. band, and these guys are three guys, and they've got a huge sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, all little things like that appeal, you know, the mm. fact that, that we're all very different looking and we all come from different backgrounds. Sure. I'm sure that also has its appeal. For mm. me, it has an appeal because I've learned so much from Ian and Sheet mm. just mm. personally mm. rather than musically. Mm. You know? Which, I mean, ultimately, you'll end up incorporating into it subliminally anyway, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They all become one another. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, but it, it's it's like that that you that when you're playing um, music, 
in that way and not not kind of with a desperado attitude, you know, mm. but uh, that one can actually get telepathic. Mm. And, you mm. know, mm. people read each other very easily, and that's that's the nice thing I like about Tananas is it's just the way we play. And mm. Mm. Uh, I can't say. I can say, but I mean, I wouldn't say it on record. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was my my main priority thing has all has always been Tananas, even though I've been involved in a lot of sure. really really amazing uh, setups. Yeah, but apart it's, from Tananas, yeah. it's it's just got a I got a soft spot for Tananas yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But man walking, I enjoy very much as well, mm-hmm. which is when the old Phil mm-hmm. Taylor and Thompson and yeah, what has actually happened with that? It, well, uh, it's it's like that with all of these projects where everybody's busy with their own things as well. Yeah. That you've got to wait till everybody's ready and got a gap to mm. get together, or if they're all performing in the same town at the same time, where mm. the opportunity presents itself, you know. Yeah. So at the moment, I think uh, Kaylin's quite busy with her naked um, project, and yeah. Wendy with hers. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know when we'll get together, but it looks like we might. Uh, the people at Opikopi were yeah. making noises, mm-hmm. you know, along those lines that mm-hmm. Wendy will be there, Kaylin will be there, I will be there. So why, why don't we do a man walking as yeah. well as a yeah. this as well as a, that? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it just depends what comes up. You know, I don't really plot and plan. Mm-hmm. You know, if I get a phone call say from White River saying, all right, are you going to come up and play for us? Then mm. immediately I'll look at Joburg or Durban mm. because they're yep. close enough to do Both, yeah. two or three things in the, mm. at the same time, you know. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, is this, I mean, if you have to sum it all up, would you say that uh, this is probably, a, 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 well, one of the more ex- or more exciting times, you know, that, I mean, with the possibilities that you've, that you've got? Yeah, and... Uh, Especially, uh, I'm especially looking forward to the trio getting together again because uh, I've enjoyed those kind of excursions and, mm. and, and projects with other musicians, but uh, the, the trio uh, is very special to me basically, you know, because of, of the way we develop together, mm. you know. And no, I mean, that development you've, I mean, as I say, I mean, I can definitely sort of hear how over the years on the on on the collection that the you know that that how you've you know be, we even be, become closer and this you know i mean yeah. the sound is knitted yeah um, so i mean i'm very interested to see what you come up with, <laughs> with the next one <laughs> yeah you know having said that we might just get together and think no it's you know yeah. it doesn't work anymore <laughs> no don't do that no don't do that no, don't do that. no it's not it's, an, it's <laughs> not that it's going to happen but yeah I mean, that, that could yeah that is is a possibility that mm-hmm. we might just keep mm-hmm. going. You know, mm-hmm. let's just carry on with our own shit. <laughs> which, is, which again, you know, is, I mean, that is, you know, by the sounds of it, I mean, you you are in a very rare place. That, yeah. Um, a lot of people don't have that. Maybe maybe not that mindset, or even as I say, the kind of um, attitude. Attitude, yeah. Um, that they can go about doing it this way because by doing it the the way that you are. Um, you've actually afforded yourself probably a lot more than somebody who was doing it with an urgency. Yes, yeah. exactly, because then, then you get all the fear and shit yeah, coming in. Yeah, and the paranoia. And that's what that's what messes up a lot of things, you see, mm. because now if if one's mindset obviously affects the future, you know, one, one's mm. current thinking mm. has the potential to become the future. So if your thinking is full of fear and mm. loathing and dread and disgust, then mm. your future might hold that.